Ukraine announced the use of British Storm Shadow missiles to attack Russia. Kyiv is already using UK permission to accept Storm Shadow missiles for attacks on Russian territory. This statement was made by advisor to the Minister for Strategic Industries of Ukraine, Yuri Sak, in an interview with Bloomberg. He said that there was already a precedent for Britain allowing Kyiv to use supplied long-range missiles. And we use them successfully, Sack said. He also stated that Ukraine is creating its own weapons which are used for attacks on Russian territory. Let us remind you that the Ukrainian armed forces use British Storm Shadow missiles for attacks on Crimea. On May the 13th, air defense forces shot down four such shells. Earlier, it became known that Poland allowed the Ukrainian armed forces to use weapons supplied to it to attack targets in Russia. Kiev's Western backers need to understand that long-range strikes on Russian territory using weaponry they have supplied would represent a conflict escalation and lead to serious consequences. Russian President Vladimir Putin outlined. Putin explained that long-range precision strikes require space reconnaissance assets, which Kiev does not have, but the US does, and that this targeting is already done by highly qualified specialists from the West without Ukrainian participation. So these representatives of NATO countries, especially in Europe, especially in small countries, must be aware of what they are playing with. The Russian president said, noting that a lot of these countries have a small territory and a very dense population. Putin told reporters that their colleagues in the West are ignoring Ukrainian attacks on Belgorod and other Russian regions along the border and only focusing on the Russian advance on Kharkiv. What caused this? They did, with their own hands. Well then, they will reap what they have sown. The same thing can happen if long-range precision weapons are used, the Russian president added. Asked if Russia was refusing to negotiate with Ukraine, Putin told reporters that such claims by the West were baffling. We don't refuse, he said. I've said it a thousand times. It's like they don't have ears. Russia produces artillery shells about three times faster than Ukraine's allies. Russia produces artillery shells about three times faster than Ukraine's Western allies and they cost four times less. This is evidenced by an analysis shared by Sky News. The calculations by consultancy Bain and Company highlight the serious challenge facing Ukraine's armed forces as they rely on ammunition supplies from the US and Europe to fight the Russian Federation. It is noted that the full-scale war between Ukraine and the occupiers was described from the very beginning as a battle by fire due to the number of artillery shells used. This has prompted the Allies to seek to increase production at their factories, but their capacity still lags behind Russia's despite a combined economic power that vastly outstrips Moscow. According to Ukrainian soldiers on the front line, for every shot they fire, the invading forces can fire about five shells in response. To combat this problem, the defense forces have learned to ensure that every attack is successful. Often with one or two or three shells, we can completely destroy a target, said Senior Lieutenant Konstantin, commander of an artillery battery in the 57th Brigade, which is fighting a new Russian incursion into the Kharkov region. According to him, the Ukrainian armed forces still need additional support. This is necessary to effectively deter the Russian Federation so that every meter of land they try to seize costs them hundreds of lives. The study found that Russian factories are likely to produce or refurbish about 4.5 million artillery shells this year, compared with a total production of about 1.3 million shells in European countries and the United States. At the same time, the cost of producing a 155 mm projectile from NATO countries is about $4,000 per unit, while Russia produces a 152 mm projectile for $1,000. Another problem is that during exercises, our military is forced to simply pretend to fire weapons. In fact, they are using ammunition for the first time on the battlefield. We don't have enough N law and we need more. We would like to thank our Western partners for their help. But if possible, we would be very grateful if they could provide more ammunition to NATO, said a soldier with the call sign Bolt, which trained new soldiers of the reconnaissance battalion of the 5th Brigade. Iran for the first time supplied Russia with the latest aerial bombs for attacks on Ukraine. For the first time, Iranian authorities supplied Russia with the latest aerial bombs for attacks on Ukraine. This was reported by Build Open Data Analysis expert Julian Repka. 
After studying video footage from the Kursk region where a heavy Iranian Qods Mohaja 6 drone crashed. According to the analyst, it was this drone that carried the latest Iranian Chem 5 guided bombs. It is noteworthy that in Iran itself, they were adopted only five years ago. Apparently, the drone was supposed to attack the Sumi region, but for an unknown reason, it fell. Robka noted, before this incident, Russian occupiers had not used high-precision Kaim-5 in Ukraine. According to Robka, their use indicates a new level of military cooperation between Tehran and the Kremlin. It became known that the invaders lost one of their reconnaissance and attack drones of the Mohajer 6 type purchased from Iran. Then Defense Express, citing Russian public pages, reported that the fall occurred in the Kursk region. Previously, Iranian media claimed that these smart bombs, depending on the flight altitude, can destroy targets at a distance of 12 to 20 kilometers, and there is also an unknown type of this bomb, the range of which has been doubled to 40 kilometers. It remains unknown how many reconnaissance and attack drones of the Mohaja 6 type may be in service with the Russian occupation forces. It will be recalled that the Russian Federation will receive these UAVs in the summer to autumn of 2022. As previously reported by the Defense Express, the Iranian Mohaja 6 drone is 75% assembled from foreign components, about half are made by US companies and another third are Japanese. There are also components from China, Germany and even Israel. At the same time, we now have a case where Mohaja 6 fell directly in the Russian Federation and here we can cautiously assume that the enemy probably has and is probably implementing plans to use these drones to support their offensive actions in the Kharkiv region or even to launch strikes on the Sumi region and also, of course, intelligence and surveillance.